I don't know if any country is prepared for such a, a natural disaster. He is back again. The most famous earthquake predictor, Frank Hugerbeats, strikes once more. But no, this time don't fear the earth and its movements, but beware of the sun. A strange warning for an impending disaster that no region in the world will escape from. And no, the stars and planets and their alignment are not the cause, nor even the movement of the tectonic plates. Darkness and broad daylight, our sun will be covered by man-made chemicals in a truly terrifying scene. And according to Frank, what we have seen in science fiction movies might be time to see in reality. The matter is serious and bigger than you imagine. There is even an entire scientific field dedicated to achieving this goal. What is the story? And what did the controversial Dutch scientists talk about? And why all this apprehension? Take a deep breath and let's see the truth of the new disaster that awaits us, the phenomenon of solar dimming. Peace and respect, dear friends. May you be well and may your times be good and may your support for our brothers in Gaza be successful in all the ways you have available through victory, boycotts, and continuous publishing. On April 19, the world was surprised by a tweet on Platform X from the controversial Dutch scientist Frank Hugerbeets, known for his predictions about earthquakes based on planetary alignment theories. However, this time, he wasn't discussing earthquakes, but a completely different topic. Hugerbeet shifted his focus to the Earth's atmosphere, and specifically its sun, issuing a warning that might initially sound like science fiction. But the reality is quite different. He addressed the topic of solar dimming, which you'll learn more about in this episode. This topic and the warning about it may seem new, but it dates back years and falls under one of the newest specialized scientific branches, solar geoengineering, also known as climate engineering. This scientific field has garnered interest from many scientists and researchers, as well as the world's wealthy individuals like Bill Gates, George Soros, and Dustin Moskowitz, who have shown significant interest and funding. Billions of dollars are being spent on research and studies, and Hooger Beats explicitly mentioned Bill Gates in his controversial warning. To understand what he meant, we first need to grasp the concept of this science. Solar geoengineering consists of studies and theories aimed at cooling the Earth and reducing its temperature by at least half a degree to prevent it from rising more than 1.5 degrees Celsius, which, according to scientists, could lead to catastrophic natural disasters. Beyond this, there could be fundamental changes in the Earth's life support system. To prevent such risks, and after the failure of many traditional methods to reduce global warming, an alternative was necessary, reflecting sunlight back into space, effectively blocking a significant amount of solar energy to cool the Earth for a time, a concept that might initially seem impossible, but it is indeed under serious consideration. Studies and experiments are racing forward, led by a scientific team at Harvard University. This idea, or theory, with roots traced back to the 1960, has gained prominence in recent years due to the increasing destructive effects of global warming, such as floods, fires, and droughts. The research has led to three potential techniques for applying solar geoengineering. The first is called marine cloud brightening, which aims to make low clouds over the oceans more reflective by spraying them with sea salt using balloons, aircraft, or other methods. This would increase their whiteness and ability to reflect sunlight. The second technique is known as cirrus cloud thinning. These ice clouds form in the high atmosphere, far from Earth's surface and pollutants. The method involves injecting aerosols into these clouds to thin them, reducing their ability to trap heat from the sun and earth. Now, let's pause to understand aerosols, 
which play a crucial role in the third technique, the focus of tonight's episode. Aerosols are tiny particles in the atmosphere that significantly impact climate, weather, health, and the environment. Their sizes vary, affecting their environmental impact by interacting with solar and thermal radiation, thus potentially blocking sunlight from reaching Earth's surface. Examples include sea spray, mineral dust, smoke, volcanic ash, and sulfur aerosols from industrial emissions. Scientists have identified this as a critical factor in cooling the Earth. But how? This leads us to the third technique, known as solar dimming. Pay close attention. This technique, also called stratospheric aerosol injection, involves injecting aerosols, particularly sulfur ones and calcium carbonate dust, into the stratosphere, about 12 miles above the Earth's surface. The approved method for applying this technique is supposed to involve using air balloons or specialized aircraft capable of reaching this altitude. Upon reaching the desired layer, they begin spraying their cargo of manufactured aerosols with the aim of reducing sunlight and its heat by reflecting a large portion back into space. In other words, they are simply dimming the sun, creating an artificial sunset in broad daylight. The idea was not born by chance. An important event in 1991, specifically on June 15 the, inspired scientists and researchers. On this day, the world witnessed the second largest volcanic eruption of the 20th century. After the eruption of the Nova Rupta volcano in Alaska, in 1912 came the eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines. This eruption caused widespread infrastructure damage and significant changes to river systems and the entire ecosystem. Of course, this volcanic eruption was accompanied by the release of millions of tons of volcanic ash saturated with sulfur dioxide, leading to a major interaction with existing aerosols in the stratosphere, resulting in a layer of sulfuric acid mist or sulfuric acid. Naturally, this led to partial dimming of the sun and a reduction in its intensity. Up to this point, this is normal for an eruption of such magnitude. However, what astonished scientists then was a general global temperature drop of half a degree Celsius, which is a significant rate in climatology. This is the very degree scientists have been striving for decades to reduce by all means. After the temperature dropped automatically in the months following the volcanic eruption, scientists confirmed that the interaction of aerosol particles with volcanic ash and its components led to reflecting more sunlight into space. This sparked a crazy idea, artificially dimming the sun. In essence, it is merely simulating the effects of a massive volcanic eruption. But wait, the matter is not that simple. This requires injection and dissemination operations over vast areas for long decades, naturally needing enormous funding. According to a study published by Harvard University in 2018, the funding might reach $2.25 billion annually for 15 years. You are free to do the math. It's an enormous amount for research and studies that have not yet seen actual implementation on the ground. As for scientific experiments, they are still non-existent, or at least, this is what is officially stated. For example, in 2021, Harvard University researchers attempted to launch a balloon capable of reaching the upper atmosphere, specifically the stratosphere over the Swedish Arctic region. However, this experiment was rejected and banned by local tribes, specifically the Sami tribe. Solar geoengineering involves catastrophic risks and consequences, was literally the text of the objection letter from the Sami Tribal Council. This experiment was halted, but research did not stop. There was an announcement of a weather balloon launch experiment over Baja, California, Mexico. The ironic and laughable part is that in both experiments, 
the United States was the funder and executor on lands that were not theirs and in skies that were not theirs. There were outcries. The purpose of launching these balloons was unknown, and it was unclear if these balloons sprayed any chemicals for solar geoengineering experiments. However, the reality is one thing, the Mexican government. Because of this experiment, any solar geoengineering experiments from any source were completely and absolutely banned. The experimental attempts did not stop, and now the search is on for a new ground, or rather a new sky, for these experiments. The focus is now on Africa. However, the voices of opposition have begun to rise. The issue is not a game, it is very serious. These experiments cannot be controlled and are unethical. They target poor countries under the pretext of developmental assistance. This is what Professor Frank Biermann, a lecturer in global sustainability governance at Utrecht University in the Netherlands, says. According to many scientists opposed to this idea, the risks are enormous, tampering with the climate, distracting attention from the real causes of global warming, damage to the already damaged ozone layer, significant damage to crops, acid rain, wines polluted with artificial aerosols, strange epidemics and diseases whose causes will be unknown, and many others. In short, the people chosen to be the testing ground for the West's new experiments will suffer greatly, as usual. The risks are dire and will not be confined to one region, but will affect the entire planet. This is exactly what the Dutch scientist Frank Hugerbeets warned about. Between supporters and opponents of this idea, which some see as more dangerous than global warming, the situation remains unchanged and the studies continue. Who knows what the coming days will bring?